out in the fantastic Chirinpur fishery in the Cotswold Water Park. Now normally this lake's only open during the summer months, but because of all the recent flooding we've had, it's actually been close to the, the normal trout angles that come on. And a few of Tom's friends have had the privilege to come over and do some fishing in the winter, so which is where we, where we find ourselves now. So uh, absolutely awesome place to, to get a few bites. We actually, me and James got here last night, um, got the rod set up in the dark, pretty much getting into darkness. Uh, flinged about and we're actually fishing over to the far bank over there because we've got a lot of water incoming. Um, didn't catch unfortunately last night but talking to a few of the guys who have fished it, a lot of fishermen coming out in the daytime, round about sort of 8 o'clock through to about 11. Um, we managed to reel the rods in this morning and um, unfortunately a couple of the uh, rods have been crazed, especially on James's rods, he's fishing onto a more sort of gravelly patch. Um, so we've got a few little ways of getting over the crayfish. They're not a massive problem in here, but there's the odd one or two, and if they're on you, then they can be a right nuisance. So we'll show you that in a sec. Um, I actually lost a fish this morning, so yeah, gutted about that. Just had it on for a split second and come off. But I'm sure there'll be more action today. So uh, we'll bring it to you as it comes. as always is boilies for me um, very versatile with the cray problem in there anything smaller seems to get whittled away and there is a few uh, bream and uh, some roach as well that go quite a good size so 18 mil to 15 mil is, uh, is pretty standard for myself um, in the winter I like to use a, a pretty a pretty soluble bait I think that's really key going into the winter months sweet soluble and spicy for me is a great combination um, so just pick your boilies sort of accordingly I'd stay away from sort of the heavily a fish meal baits being that um, they bring in quite an inherent oil content and although the water temperature at the moment isn't too bad they do tend to lock the baits up and, and restrict the bait from releasing. Um, still still get eaten by carp but the actual attraction this in terms of flowing food signals would be limited. Um, so one, one thing I do also is uh, glove the baits as well. I find this imperatively important especially in the winter months putting liquid food into the lake nice soluble signal and the easiest way to do that is simply um, using sort of some of these type pots, glugging up the baits prior to your fishing. Uh, there's a load of 18 mils and they've been in there for a few hours, they're sucking in the signals. And we've got the actual dip there and these pots are, are quite neat in the fact that you can uh, drop this in. Basically the baits will be soaking permanently in this and then you pull them out and then you've got some baits ready to go. So a great little, great little edge there. So we're using uh, this is the rig, a little snowman rig, really to get round the craze as well. We've got a hardened hook bait there, really tough and durable, going to last the night. And a nice uh, white fleck of a little 12 mil pop up, that is a little hell pop up. And that just gives a bit of visual. This is all critically balanced, it goes down nice and gently. And then we top this off just by dipping the whole lot into the glug. I actually put the lead, tube in, everything into this. And this has a couple of functions. One is it gets the liquids out there, but also it helps anti-tangle properties as well because you'll notice the dip gets in all, all the little swivels that I use and all the little hook links and just makes that a bit more rigid. As soon as it goes into the water, it dissolves off, leaving your, your rig mechanics all fully functional. So there we go. We'll go on to the rig a bit later, but that's the little combination of bait that we're using for this session. As you would expect, this is a massive magnet for the fish. And what we do, what we do now is just literally, we've asked the fish of the owner, just going to come around and just sort of kick up the bank a little bit and turn this water into cloudy water. 
again just to help stimulate the fish and this is really effective on any venue where there's water coming in but I do stress we do uh, ask the owner to go kicking up his bank so uh, we're going to do that and see if we can induce a bite. Well this is my rig of choice, I use this for all my out and out boily fishing very very efficient although it looks like there's a lot going on it's all there for a reason just starting in my uh, right hand I've got a little quick change link there so simply can change over the rigs and, and change uh, hook links if I need to um, there's a little sleeve there that just helps kick away the hook bait very very important in my eyes to extend the hook link out as fully as we can uh, the actual material here we're using as the uh, boom section is 20 pound IQ absolutely brilliant all-rounder goes over everything, lays over debris and all sorts and it, on the bottom it's absolutely invisible. Um, this is going up to a tiny little micro swivel that's covered in a bit of putty. The putty just helps align the hook link on, uh, onto the deck uh, but also has another function when it's in the fish's mouth it just helps pull down that section just aiding the hooking properties. Um, just goes through there you just see there's a little tiny knot it's a doubled over section of 25 pound mouth trap it just means it extends the hook shank and you can change the hook bait in a flash because it's just looped on um, like a Johnny Mac sort of rig if you like or, or Mickey Kavanagh you probably have some words to say it's probably him that's actually developed it um, that goes up to a size 6 choddy out to and die again very important sort of style of hook out to and I just helps that section become straight and I always like to have it straight I don't bend it at all I find you get much more better hooking properties with a straight as opposed to a curve um, and then that goes on to a tiny, oh, the shank you just noticed there, a tiny little micro swivel with a rig ring. Brilliant flexibility for the hook bait. Um, and then a little float stop there on the hook just to anchor everything in place. And that float stop's in a critical position. You can see now the hook is actually, everything's aligned downwards. Um, exactly how I want it to behave in the fish's mouth. If I was to move that stop up a little bit round here, which some, some people do, can you see now the hook has actually flipped the other way. Um, now in order for that hook bait to catch hold the fish has got to pull from uh, the, well, the hook bait's got to go in the fish's mouth first and then there has to be tension for that hook then to flip over and I don't want that I want the hook in the prone position for as long as possible and by moving the stop up there you can see automatically gravity takes over the hooks are lining downwards um, hook bait itself say boily fishing I always balance this rig so it all, always kicks away a balanced bait in this, in this, um, in this point we're having a, uh, a snowman buoyancy on top, grab it on the bottom and line there from downwards again. So uh, there you have it, nice simple little rig, really efficient hooker and as soon as you put this in the margins all the components pretty much disappear so well worth a go. Unfortunately, nothing's happened this morning. Uh, Jim has had to go, he's left now, so it leaves me here on my own. What I'm probably going to do is uh, nip home, have a freshen up, have a shower, um, come back and do the last night. And fingers crossed, there's only a couple of places where they can be. I know the lake quite well, and they're certainly not where we are at the moment, so I'm going to move the rods just round and fish a couple of different areas and hopefully uh, nick a fish. So, um, yeah, I'm going to get on, get home, and get back as soon as possible. Well, would you believe it, Jimmy had, no long, had been no longer than probably two minutes out the gate and I've had to give him a call <laughs> to come back and uh, photograph, or to video this and to photograph this fish. Um, I've swung the rods round down into another bay. I just thought that uh, the fish obviously not up where the area we were. Put the rods down here and literally within five minutes this rod's gone off on a little oily bag that I showed you yesterday. Just cast out into a, into a silty area. Had an inkling they'd probably be there if they were at the top end and uh, this is the result so yeah we're well happy to end on a fish I'm gonna get this fella back i've got to get to work i've got loads of bait to pull um, so yeah glad to uh, glad to finish with uh, an absolute cracker from Chirin Paul. Mm -hmm.